Hello and welcome. Today's date is May 11th. Uh, Luxembourg, like uh, some other European countries, are starting to try to get out of confinement. So, fingers crossed, let's hope uh, there won't be a second wave. Well, I guess there will be, but hopefully not as bad as the first one. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so today, welcome. Today I'm talking about Drake. So Drake is quite interesting. It's an interesting package because um, it's basically a build automation tool. So if you are using Linux, you might have come across make files and you might have come across, let me actually show you uh, make file documentation on uh, GNU's website. So um, as you can see, a make file consists of rules with the following shape, a target, some prerequisites and a recipe. So it's basically a tool that is used to build software. Uh, you might wonder why should uh, we be interested into that? Well, because basically a data science pipeline is software. So um, we are facing the same problems as uh, software engineers. But uh, data scientists or statisticians for the longest time have been doing that manually. Software engineers automated this literally decades ago. WAF is another such uh, build automation tool. Um, it's written in Python, but you can use it for anything. Uh, make, I don't know exactly, maybe it's written it's in C, but you can also use it to do anything, really. And Drake, um, oh, by the way, I'm showing you this uh, blog post, which was basically the one that um, made me want to try Drake. Drake was already in my rad radar for some time. Radar? 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 Radar in English, I guess, uh, for some time. <coughs> but uh, never really came to trying it. So I uh, uh, need to drink a bit, sorry. Um, so um, this was really the post that uh, made me want to try it. So thanks, thank you, Miles, Miles McBain. Bain. Um, I really encourage you to read it. It's quite interesting, um, and the it really explains everything that um, you need to to know about Drake. So what I'm showing you today is my attempt at uh, building a little example of what a very simple a uh, Drake project could look like, but mixed with uh, package development. So the, the idea I had was to build a package with all the functions I needed to clean my data, visualize my data, and run a machine learning uh, pipeline, uh, and have this in a package, and then have a Drake file, uh, which you're seeing here, that would run this in a very simple and automated way. So I called my package cool ML project. This package contains uh, many functions, as you can see down here. So um, I first function is get data, which is used well to, you guessed it, to get the data. Actually, my, my uh, model is, is, is running right now, but it, it it's taking a lot of time, so I'll have to go from sample 1000 to sample 100. Um, but yeah, this function, as you can see, because it's inside the package, has some documentation. So this documentation gets compiled uh, as I uh, build the package. Uh, this function doesn't take any uh, input, but it does a bunch of stuff. It downloads the data from the UCI machine learning repository. Um, it just samples uh, 1,000 rows, but I need to uh, decrease that. It then uh, defines the uh, column names, it downloads the testing data, and it returns a list with both training and testing data. That's the first thing. Then the second function um, is, uh, well, preprocess, which is a very simple function, which simply takes the training set as an argument, and then it's a simple recipe uh, that just binarizes the uh, predictors. Oops. Um, then I defined uh, a grid over which I will uh, train uh, my, or tune rather, tune my model. So grid, again, very simple. It takes a model specification. Actually, I see that here I called it model spec and then here model. So let me correct that. Um, and this just, you know, builds a grid from, so if you're familiar with the tidy models framework, you would recognize some of the code. 
Um, then I have another function that defines my model. Very simple again, uh, it's a parsnip uh, model, um, so that's why I import the parsnip package. So for now, up until now, it's a very standard package, like there's nothing very different um, from a standard package. It's just a bunch of functions with some documentation, the imports that I need, uh, and that's it. Now, where it is a bit different is in the, um, or rather, let me show you the, um, the structure. In the, so I have my git in your, I have my, a, dra a dot drake file, so I will explain what is inside in a bit. Um, my namespace, uh, my readme, and an in inst file, uh, inst um, folder. Inside the inst folder, I have my run analysis.r. So this is where I load my packages. So I load my cool ML project package, I load dplyr, and I load drake. And then I define a Drake plan. Uh, the Drake plan, as you can see, is just a series of calls to each of my functions. So first get the data, then I define my training data and my testing data. Then uh, I uh, define my splits, my cross-validation splits. I pre-process my training set. I define my model. So in my case, uh, boosted uh, extreme, grad extreme gradient boosting uh, models, but I could just copy and paste this code and change boost tree by logistic regression, for example. And I would have a new model, a new model specification. Same for the grid, same for the workflow. So I have this function, I didn't show it to you, but it's a function that builds this uh, tidy models workflow that um, encapsulates the uh, model as well as the recipe or the pre-processing. This is very nice because then it's very easy to run the tuning over uh, the grid. So you just pass the grid, the workflow, and the cross-validation splits to tune grid, and it's, it trains your model. So now this is very interesting because now that I have this plan, I can simply execute it with make plan. This is very, very nice for many reasons. First of all, this structure here, forces you to work in a very clean way. It really forces you to define very simple functions that do one thing. Um, this then has the added benefit that if you need, if you want to try several models, so extreme gradient boosting, random forests, logistic regressions, whatever, you can simply call this, uh, let's say, uh, builders, this, these functions that build the models, that build the workflows, etc. So it's um, very nice. The second benefit is that as you see here in my console, um, I see, so I have my target here, boost, tuned boosted trees. So what does that mean? So uh, before the video, I ran the, the plan and all the targets, so each line here is a target, all the targets were built already. They were pre, or they were already compiled. That's what's inside this dot drake file that I uh, alluded to just before. That's what's, in, that's what's inside here. Uh, here you have the cache of the project. So because these targets were built before I ran the video, they are not being built again. The only thing that wasn't built was the last target, which is the model. And as you can see now, it's uh, running on the second fold. So it takes quite some time. Uh, so this is the only thing that's being built. So what this means is that if you have several models or if you have uh, several, you know, cleaning steps, visualization steps, you build plots, you build whatever, only the targets that are outdated will be built. So maybe if you update your data, only some, or if you're working with several data sets and one of them gets updated, only the targets that depend on that data set will get updated. So this is a huge time saver, really, really huge time saver. Um, the other benefit that this has is that because um, you work this way, you work in this very structured way, it also makes you think about what is actually um, the sequence of your project. Because I don't know about you, but when I start a project, I really go, uh, I, I start looking everywhere. So I, I first, you know, I, I do some cleaning, uh, then I, you know, I do, oh, I need to explore a little bit more. So I explore a bit more, then I redo some cleaning, then I do some visualization, then I run a linear regression, then I redo some cleaning, I redo some, and after two days of this, 
the project is a mess. So if you start working in this very structured way, the advantage is that you have to think a little bit, okay, first, let's acquire the data. So let's think about that. Then, okay, now that I have the data, let's clean it. Let's think about that. So it, it I, 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 my, at least for me, it really forces me to, to work in a more structured way. The other nice thing is that, as I said, a target can be anything. It can be a model, it can be a cleaning step, it can be a visualization. So I don't have any plots here, but it could be a, you know, one of the targets could be a GG plot. And your last target that you could put down here could be a markdown file. So, and then inside the markdown file, you just call, you just grab the uh, elements from the cache. So these targets here will become available by using so let me try maybe i can stop i don't know if i can stop the uh yes it worked so you can read with two d's the targets for example uh let's go with the pre-process so read pre-process gets grabs the recipe from the dot drake folder if i write reads um, maybe let's go with um training sets this will grab the training set from uh, the cache. So this is quite useful because it also allows you, so the, inside the, the markdown file, you'll have calls to this, um, to, to, to this read function to grab the elements that you need. So for example, if one of your targets is a ggplot, you just read this ggplot out of the cache and it will show. Um, the other advantage is that you can mix both an approach that is very interactive because you know now i grabbed my my training set i could you know save it um sa sa save it in uh, inside a f um inside a, a variable oh i think my editor broke i oh, know yeah, it's me who broke so um you can simply save it um inside inside uh, a, 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 a variable and, and start working with it again interactively so which means that you can you know test some things and then go back to writing a function so this is really really useful as well um, and then of course if you want to uh, clean the cache to really force the uh, targets to be outdated and rebuild everything from scratch nice and cleanly you can do so as well by using drake clean so and this will uh, force everything to become outdated and then you can run your project again and here you see it will load uh, everything again it will build all the targets again um, and it will yeah relaunch everything again from from the start this is quite useful um, as well to make sure that everything is working well because if your target becomes uh, outdated for example if you are modifying a function uh, if I now go and modify, for example, get data, um, the problem with if, if I just modify this and if I rerun my plan, well, Drake won't know that I changed my get data function. So uh, Drake won't know that the data is uh, is outdated. So um, uh, that's why that's why uh, now it's running much faster. And I think I know why just before the video. I um, recompiled a version of my package with uh, sample equal 100 and actually I think that if I recover this file and if I say yes, yes you see it's back so I didn't save between the two takes and that's why now the um, model is actually running much faster. So. This was just a very short video. I will make um, a blog post as well uh, because I think there's a lot of things uh, that, that are very important and I think that if it's written down, it would make understanding easier. I will link to uh, Miles' blog post, which is really nice. You should read it. Um, I will also link, so this code is in the GitHub repository. I will also link to this GitHub repository. Uh, install the package, try it out, see if it works on your machine. It works on mine, but uh, I'm also, I mean, I'm developing on this machine, so maybe who knows, it's maybe um, that's why it works. So it would be interesting if you could test this as well. Look into Drake. Drake is the kind of tool that if you don't use it, you don't know how useful it can be. Um, you don't know the, until you, you, you've used it, you don't know really how much 
better it is to use it than not to use it. It's this, this kind of things that you really have to get into it to see the benefits. It's a bit difficult to convince you with this video that it's useful. Even uh, if I think um, that, as you see, there's, there are many benefits of running, of running uh, your data science pipeline using Drake. Um, well, I will link to this uh, different, uh, let's take a look at the model now that it's finished. I will link to the different, um, oops, I will link to the different links, so I don't remember how my tor target is called. And uh, let me know what you think. And uh, as usual, you know, leave a like, leave uh, a comment if you found this interesting. And let's see, really curious to see tuned, boosted trees. And there it is. Well, yeah, you don't see it in my console, in my console, but uh, it is a very nice table with the results um, of each fold. So see you next time. And uh, most importantly, stay safe.